There yeah. you go, now you are. Um, so I'm finishing up on the arthropods here. Arthropods, come on, remote control mouse. Mouse can't work without that thing. Right now. Okay, so arthropods, they evolved from worms, we think. Segmented worms. Can you see the segmentation there? If you just looked at that part of the body, you might think it's a segmented worm. Um, but you have we have evolved what we call jointed appendages. Jointed appendages are arms and legs that have joints, just like your elbow joint. So the different parts of the arm and leg can move independently of one another, and the whole thing can be armored. You can make the sides very tough and only have flexibility at the joints, just like a suit of armor that a knight wears has flexibility at the joints, but it also has armor. Armor, so you can, what all these things evolved was armor on the outside. It's called an exoskeleton. You ever heard of an exoskeleton before? That is an evolutionary um, invention of arthropods. And it's kind of an armor on the outside. It's, uh, it's made of a substance called chitin. Where have you seen chitin before? Fungus. Cell, walls. cell walls of a fungus. It's kind of a tough material. And um, these things, they also have evolved something special, the compound eye. And a compound eye is a little bit different from other eyes that you see throughout the animal kingdom. A compound eye has hundreds of basically smaller eyes put together. Every little facet that you see there, every little hexagon that you see is kind of like an individual eye with its own cornea, its own lens, its own receptor. And each of them, they all kind of go together to make the thing that's shaped like a ball. So you got some of the little eyes facing out this way and some of the little eyes facing out this way. And they all send messages to the brain. So the arthropod has an idea of everything all the way around them because the eye sits up on top of it. And they got two of them, so they're getting and double yeah. images. So he never has to like remove his eyes. He just always That's right. He's seeing in all directions at once. Wouldn't that be cool if you could do that? But you can't. Yeah. So just, do they have like no peripheral? Or it's just like. Focus yeah, focus they don't have to worry about peripheral vision. They're seeing in all directions at once. Uh huh. Compound eyes do not make out detail as well as our eyes do, though. For instance, a compound eye couldn't read these letters. They would just see kind of a dark here. Compound eyes can't make out detail as well. They are much better, though, at seeing movement. So they can detect just the slightest movement. And, and that serves these organisms pretty well. Mr. Lewis. Yes. You know how you let them like, hit a fly from behind and they fly away? It's hard because they can see. Yeah, they can see. Wow. Yeah, you can't sneak up behind a fly. They're looking right at you. And they can, like I say, they can see movement real well. So as soon as you start moving your hand, it's, it's gone. They also, uh, it's thought that they process information faster, which means things are kind of moving in slow motion with them. And so they got time to get out of the way. But there's all sorts of arthropods out there. There's insects and spiders and crabs and lobsters and shrimp. And they just come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Sometimes the leg is modified into a claw. Sometimes the leg is modified to swim. Sometimes it's like a scorpion. It's got poison on it. There's all sorts of different modifications, and we aren't going to go through all of that. Some of them have six legs, insects have six legs, spiders have eight legs. Um, centipedes and millipedes have a lot more. Centipede doesn't really have a hundred and a millipede doesn't really have a thousand. That's, that's just what they call it. Some of them have evolved wings and can fly around. 
They've got different types of mouth parts. You can, I took a whole class in college just studying arthropods. The body is often divided up. The, the insects you see often have three parts of their body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. A spider will only have two parts, the, um, what we call the cephalothorax, which is a head and thorax together in the abdomen. We're going to study the way these things circulate, the way these things breathe. It's pretty cool. See those little holes on the side of the um, grasshopper there? That's how it breathes. They're called spiracles. That's how the oxygen gets in. They don't breathe through their nose. To smother a grasshopper, you have to block up all the spiracles. Ooh, there's a big scorpion. That's a black widow spider. The horseshoe crab is probably the oldest relative of this group. Is it part of the group? It is an arthropod. Mm -hmm. And probably all the insects and and spiders and shrimp and lobsters and everything probably came from something that looked kind of like that. How long has the horseshoe crab been around? It's, it's pretty old, like 300 million years, 400 million years, something like that. Finally, we're now to the deuterostomes, and these formed anus first. Not like the mouth first of everything else we just studied, but the, the, uh, the starfish, they're called echinoderms. Echinoderms. It means spiny skin. Because if you look up close at starfish and, and their relatives, which are, um, which are, uh, sea urchins, they got little spines on their skin. And sometimes the spines are just little bumps like this that one has, but sometimes they're, they're points like a sea urchin has and it can stick you. All of these things have one thing in common, or they have a few things in common, but one of the things is the tube feet. Tube feet are like little suction cups on the bottom of a starfish. And what they basically do is they'll come, I'll pass these around so you can look at them, but they'll come up to a clam and they got these tube feet, they're little suction cups on the bottom of their bodies. And the suction cups can pull in water and spit out water, each one individually, and there's thousands of them. And so if all the suction cups are pulling in water at the same time, it'll suction onto something real hard. So there'll be a clam just kind of buried in the sand, filter feeding, and a starfish will slowly come up, and it'll find it, and it'll crawl on it, and it'll just kind of wrap itself around it like that. And the starfish has a lot of muscle, and it'll pull the clamshell over. Something you would never be strong enough to do, but it can do it. And then the starfish will take its stomach and shove its, its stomach out through its mouth. That's the mouth. The stomach actually comes out of the mouth and goes into the body of the clam. And the stomach digests the clam right there inside its own shell. And then sucks the clam soup, what's left of the clam, back into its body with its stomach. And what you're left with is this clam shell which might have washed up on shore and somebody found it, now I have it. Isn't that cool? All echinoderms have two feet on the bottom, and they have what's called a water vascular system, which means water runs in and out of the organism. Instead of blood, they use water, they use seawater. When they take water in, it feeds, it gives uh, oxygen to all their cells, and they can squirt water out through their tube feet. There's also a hole at the top that lets in and out water. What do you call that system? Water. A water vascular system, which means it's like water, not 
people on it. This is what all e all echinoderms have a water vascular system. And it serves them well. Do starfish have eyes? No. Yeah, they do. Yeah. See a little eye spot right there? They got little eye spots on the end of each ray. All echinoderms? No, not all of them, just some of them. And they can uh, make out lightness and darkness. They can't see as well as we can, but they can see to some extent. Where'd you say they had eyes? Right there, check that out. See eye spot? Right at the tip of each ray, or each arm. How does it move? It's got muscles inside of it, and the suction cups help to, like, suction onto something, and they can pull itself to it. Suction on and pull itself to it. How is it strong enough to pull up a, to pull apart a shell? Strong, a lot of muscle. You said we we're not able to do that. To pull apart. A closed clam shell. Okay, great. I like that. How about it, like a closed oyster? Could you open an oyster with your hands? Probably not. Yeah, they, they can hold those things shut. Even you could grip it like they could. You still could have it. I don't think so. I mean, I could, but y'all could. <laughs> <laughs> um, here is a uh, sea urchin. Y'all seen those? If you look on the underside of the sea urchin, it's got two feet just like a starfish. They'll sting in. Sometimes those are poisonous. Sea cucumber, you ever seen those? Mm -hmm. Those things that come out of its mouth, those are tube feet. It feeds with the tube feet. So the, the sea urchins actually have like any chemicals in them? Some of them do. Chemicals that you step on them, they and and only if it like breaks the skin or yeah, if it'll break the skin so and inject something. Oh, one time my dad was snorkeling and he stepped on sea urchins and he had like black things in his foot for so long. Uh, and I tried to get them out with the tweezer and yeah. I just ended up cutting it hit open his foot so many times because I couldn't get them out. Brutal. I know how to tell a story. So much for the page of the viewer right there. What was that? Nothing. What did she just say? I just showed the starfish attacking the clams. Let's see. Um, Tell you what, go ahead and stop this recording right now. Oh, that's